Curiosity isn't always a good thing. I once thought discovering everything the world had to offer was my true passion. It turns out, though, some things are best left alone. I always had an interest in the unknown and the unexplained. Mysteries were what I enjoyed most, and the darker the story, the more it fascinated me. Last year on my 23rd birthday, I launched a website focused on mysterious stories, and I loved it more than anything. People sent in crazy tales ranging from being followed in the woods to finding strange objects. I read every single story I received and always attempted to come up with an answer to the mystery. I rarely could though, as such things are hard to explain, and I think humanity as a whole can't comprehend what might be out there. When I wasn't running the website, I would explore woods and haunted houses looking for anything out of the ordinary. I also asked people to send in objects or documents that they thought was of mysterious origin or haunted. I never really had anything strange happen and after over six months, I began to feel a little bored. The stories people told were great, but I never actually saw anything firsthand that made me truly believe in the supernatural. That all changed when I made the biggest mistake of my entire life. Outside of people sending me things, I would also search for objects myself. A boring but simple place that I would check out every Sunday was my local library. I dig through endless amounts of books looking for anything unusual or dark. I never expected to find much, but I guess the goal was something along the lines of a book that had been passed from owner to owner causing fear before finally ending up there. A cursed item or artifact, so to speak. I figured I'd never find anything, but it was fun to look all the same. Either way, I loved reading, and the library in my town was very calm and peaceful. It was a particularly cool August day when everything began. I woke up pretty early and checked the website, but nothing had changed from the night before. I sat back in my chair and debated what to do with my day. I finally decided I'd head to the library for an hour or so and see if I could find anything. It was only a 10 minute walk from my house, so I got there a little before 8.30. I nodded to the librarian as I walked through the glass doors. She was used to seeing me in there and was always very nice. I browsed through the shelves for about 20 minutes, looking for anything new, but I didn't have much luck. I found one book about the Salem Witch Trials, but it was essentially just stating facts about what happened, and it wasn't anything that I didn't already know. I began to feel discouraged, not just because of the book, but in general. I loved everything unknown. I wanted to believe every word of the stories people sent me, but I had to admit at this point, it was becoming difficult. I considered leaving the library and re-evaluating my whole life, but before I did, a book at the end of the aisle caught my eye. It was bigger than most of the other books and seemed to be made out of a strange material. It stuck out a few inches into the aisle, which was the only reason I even noticed it. There was something else too, a strange feeling I got when I looked at it. A part of me thought I should ignore the book and leave, but my curiosity outweighed those feelings. I grabbed the book and pulled it out slowly. It was large and bound in what looked like aged leather. It was clear that it was incredibly old, and there was no writing of any kind on the cover or the back. I pulled it open and coughed as dust filled my lungs. I wheezed into my arm for a few seconds before turning my attention back to the first page. It was entirely blank except for one word that I had never heard before and didn't understand. It simply said, Shika wool. I felt a chill crawl up my spine as I tried to make sense of what I had read. I wasn't sure if it was a statement in a strange language or a name of some kind. My best guess was that it was a name or title. Nothing else seemed logical. I turned to the next page, and to my surprise, it looked just like the first one. It just said Shika wool again, with nothing else at all on the entire page. I felt even weirder the more I flipped but page after page, it was the same thing. Shika Wool in big letters on every single page of the book. There were 33 unmarked pages, and all of them just displayed this strange word. I was confused, but also excited, as I hadn't been so intrigued by something in a long time. I decided I would take the book home and do more research. I checked out the book and asked if the librarian knew where it had come from, but she stated she had never seen it before. I walked home, book in hand, thinking about what this strange word could possibly mean. When I got home, the first thing I did was a Google search on it, but to my surprise, I didn't find anything at all. No translation, no definition, no names that matched it. 
absolutely nothing at all, no indication of what Shikawul meant. I sat back in my chair and thought hard for a few minutes. I felt so at a loss as I expected Google to come up with at least some kind of explanation. I decided to ask on my website if anyone was familiar with the word, and then I looked through the book one more time to make sure I hadn't missed anything. I hadn't though, it was just Shiko Wool on every page in the exact same handwriting. I was so confused and decided to take a break for the rest of the day and try and find something else to do as I was getting a strange feeling. I watched TV until it got dark, and then at about 10, I decided to heed to bed. That night I had a dream that an old woman chased me around the forest near my house screaming Sikawul at me over and over again until I finally woke up. I was covered in sweat and my heart was racing as I shook my head and sat up. I thought I had probably just spent too much time looking at the book as it was all that was on my mind. I fell back asleep and slept peacefully for a few more hours and slowly got up as the light pierced through my bedroom window. I felt a bit calmer but I still had a bad feeling. I figured I should check the outside of my house just to make sure everything was fine. I knew it probably was, but since I lived alone, I liked to be safe. I walked through my living room and the book caught my eye. I could have sworn I closed it the night before, but it was open. I figured I had to be mistaken as I walked over and shut it reading, Shika Wool, one more time trying to make it register anything that made sense in my brain. I stepped out the front door and examined my house. I rented the house from my dad's friend, and since he couldn't find anyone else to take any of the other two rooms, I lived alone full time, which was a sweet deal for me. I scanned the exterior of the house, but there was nothing of note. Before I went back inside, I examined the tree line. The forest was about 75 feet from my house and was big, ranging for a few miles. I noticed what looked like a bunch of branches right in front of the trees and I got the same grim feeling, like when I was looking at the book. I slowly walked over to examine what they were, and when they came into view, my heart dropped. At that point in time, it was probably the worst feeling I ever had in my entire life. I was right about it being branches, but I would never have guessed how they were laid out. They were broken into letters and spelled out a single word. As you probably could have guessed, the word was Shikawul. I couldn't believe what I had seen. I slowly backed away from the branches, careful not to touch them, and went back inside, slamming the door. I racked my brain trying to come up with any explanation that made sense, but nothing did. I opened the book again, and flipped through the endless pages of Sikawul, looking for anything at all that would help explain this. But as I suspected, there was nothing. I sat back on my couch feeling very uncomfortable. Sikawul was all that I could think about. I decided that this had to be related to the supernatural, and that the word must have some otherworldly meaning. Whether it was a ritualistic word, or the name of some demon, I knew there had to be something up with it. I checked the website for any responses about Sikawul, but there was still nothing. I spent the rest of the day occasionally flipping through the book and looking out at the woods for any movement. There was nothing new, everything outside seemed calm even though on the inside I was beginning to become truly scared. The more I tried to rationalize it, the more I realized just how irrational it really was. There was no good explanation other than the book had caused what had happened. That still didn't really make any sense to me. After hours and hours of thinking, I finally decided to go to bed around 9.30 since I was exhausted. I drifted off to sleep with Sheikah Wool running through my thoughts. That night, I had the same dream of the old woman chasing after me screaming that terrible word over and over again. I woke up in a panic and tried to shake my mind free of everything. I was so sick of Shikawul, but I couldn't get it out of my head. I glanced out the window and saw the sun just barely coming up. I sighed, realizing there was no way I was going to sleep anymore. So I figured I'd check the house and the yard to make sure there was nothing related to Shikawul anywhere. I walked past the book in the living room as I did the morning before, and it was open again. I could have sworn I had shut it, but I expected it to be open. I didn't think there was any shot this was all just going to suddenly end. I walked around outside and to my relief, I didn't find anything new near the woods. That made me feel a bit better, but all that faded quickly when I turned back towards my house and saw it. In big red letters that looked like blood there it was. Sheikah Wool written on the side of my house right below my bedroom window. 
I didn't even want to check if it was actually blood. I decided to return the book immediately. I grabbed it and began walking towards the library, hoping to get some answers, but mainly just with the goal of getting rid of the book. It was like my mind was overcome by Zika wool, and it just ran through my thoughts over and over again. I got to the library quickly and walked up to the front desk immediately. The librarian seemed taken aback as I'm sure I had a somewhat crazed look on my face. Is everything all right? She asked. I checked out this book. I want to return it, but I have to ask first. Do you know what this word means? I flipped it open to the first page, and she put on her glasses to read it. Shika wool, she said in a confused tone. No, I have no idea what that could mean. I wasn't surprised by that response. I really didn't expect much. All right, I was just curious. Thanks anyway. Like I said, I want to return it either way. She nodded, looking a bit concerned, and set it aside on the counter. I turned around and headed out the front door. Shika wool. I heard behind me in a whispered tone. I wasn't sure if I imagined it or not. What was that? I asked the librarian with terror overcoming me. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about what it could mean. It sounds strangely familiar, but I don't know why. Ha ha ha, gotcha. I shakily replied, pushing my way out the front door. I could feel her eyes on me as I stepped out onto the street. I calmed down some as I headed home, but I was still weary. The librarian seemed odd, but so did everything over the past 48 hours. I tried to rid all of this from my mind as I walked home. I stepped through the front door and collapsed to the ground when I saw it. The book was somehow back, sitting in my living room wide open. And this time, no human being said it, but I still heard it clear as day coming from the book. Shika wool. It hissed in a sinister voice. I couldn't take my eyes off that horrible book as it continued to whisper it over and over. I packed my bag quickly and left my house without a second thought. I had a good friend who lived about five minutes from me, and I knew he would let me stay with him without any heads up. I called on the way just to be safe, but he was completely fine with it. I didn't mention why, as I felt like it would be impossible for someone to believe my story. When I got to his house, he was heading out to work. But he told me it was fine for me to hang out, as his roommate was out of town, and the whole basement was empty. I laid down on the couch at the bottom of the stairs and stared up at the ceiling. I tried to make sense of what was happening, but I still couldn't. Sikawul ran through my thoughts, and I couldn't rid myself of it no matter what I did. I tried to think about other things, anything else, but no matter what it was, always there. I watched a couple movies and relaxed a bit, but not very much. I reached the conclusion that the book was cursed or something, and Shikawul had some kind of evil supernatural meaning. Nothing had really happened to indicate that the word was evil, but I just had such a bad feeling about it. The branches and the writing on the house felt threatening one way or another, but even besides that, when I saw Shikawul or thought about it, I just felt afraid and uncomfortable, like I had seen something that I wasn't supposed to. My friend worked all day and didn't get back until 10. I didn't want to come across as weird, but I couldn't resist asking him if the word meant anything to him. Like the librarian, I didn't think it would, but I still had to ask. Hey man, does the word Shikawul mean anything to you? Um, what? Shikawul? He looked incredibly confused, so I decided to move on. Someone at the library just said it today. I was confused too. He laughed briefly and I let out a forced chuckle, and then quickly changed the subject. We hung out for about a half hour, but since he had to work again the next morning, he went upstairs to bed, and I tried to get some shut-eye as well. I felt a bit safer at his place, but I dreaded what might be going on at my house with the book. I figured I'd go check it out in the morning, and if there was anything new, I'd call my dad and see if he could help make any sense out of it. I didn't think he'd fully believe me, but he knew I wouldn't lie about such a thing. I eventually drifted off to sleep, and the same exact dream awoke me again very early. I yawned and looked around the room, but everything seemed the same. I glanced towards the stairs and about had a heart attack when I saw it. The book was sitting on the steps about halfway up. It was open again, and almost seemed to whisper that horrible word. I was frozen with fear, and my mind just kept repeating Shikawul over and over again. 
I slowly got up and grabbed the book looking for anything different, but it was the same thing all over. I was completely done with it, and I grabbed the book and headed back to my house without waking up my friend. I walked up the driveway and saw the house was covered with more writing. There were three more words in the same red lettering, and there were another three made out of branches in the lawn. I didn't care though, there was only one thing on my mind. I was going to burn the book. I had a feeling it would end everything, and it was the only real idea I had. No matter what, I was going to rid myself of Sheikah Wool once and for all. I had a small fire pit outside, and I threw the book into it with some kindling and lit the side of the book. As I did, it flung itself open and rifled through the pages as it slowly became engulfed in flames. As it did, a hissing sound repeating Sheikah Wool over and over again came from the middle of the blaze. I realized quickly that the pages themselves weren't burning. It was almost as if the space outside of the book was on fire, but the book itself was untouched by the flames. I began to panic as the fire slowly died and I wasn't able to start another one. I decided to just leave the book and go inside as it continued to hiss Shika Wool quietly over and over. I went inside and locked the door. I debated what to do, and I decided I was going to head to my parents' house and tell them everything that had happened. I went up to my room and packed a bag. On my way down the stairs, I almost fell down as I glanced into the living room. The book was inside the house, open once again. I ran over to that horrible text and slammed it shut as I could continue to hear it hiss Shika Wool. I threw it in the trash and prepared to head out. Before I could though, I heard a door creak open upstairs. To my absolute horror, I heard the same hissing sound coming from upstairs getting louder and louder. It was clear someone was walking around, and I froze, terrified, my eyes glued on the stairs. I heard someone step onto the first step, and then an old woman's voice repeating Shika Wool over and over again. I tried to open the front door, but it wouldn't budge. I turned around slowly and saw the old woman from my dreams standing on the last step, staring at me, still whispering. Shika Wool. She looked like the librarian, but if she were 20 years older and sick, I tried desperately to get the door open, but it was as if someone had locked it from the outside. The old woman approached me, still whispering that awful word over and over without ever taking a breath. I closed my eyes and covered my ears, but my thoughts still couldn't shake that awful word. I slumped to the ground as I felt her footsteps above me. She grabbed me by the arms, and I slowly looked up at her in terror. The last thing I thought before everything went dark was Shikawul, and I finally realized what it meant.